Croiso friends, I'm back and I'm branching out. Up until now, this YouTube channel has been about pre-1600s clothing and material culture, since when I started Opus LNI originally as a blog, which can still be seen over at opuslni.com, I was using it to document my arts and sciences journey in the SCA. However, my goals have shifted and I'm looking to widen the scope of this channel to include more modern clothing. Now, more modern is pretty relative when you're talking about after the death of Queen Elizabeth I. Eventually, I do plan to make some Victorian and Edwardian clothes in general, and to jump on the artistic reform dress bandwagon in particular. Today's project, however, is thoroughly modern. I was scrolling through Instagram, as I am wont to do, and I saw a wonderful A-line linen skirt with a deep ruffle at the bottom, and it struck me how fantastically versatile an article of clothing it was, so I decided to make myself one. Before I get into the construction and styling of this skirt, I wanted to take a couple of minutes and talk about CocoVid. If you haven't heard of it, CocoVid is the costume community's online historical costuming extravaganza, running from Thursday, July 30th to Sunday, August 2nd. There will be classes and panels, as well as several social events on Instagram, such as the Sunday Undies hashtag party organized by Liz from Lizscapism, and a Discord server dedicated to being an open area for chatting and socializing. Hey everyone, editing Courtney and Bran here. Just popping in real quick to say that in addition to all of the other things that I mentioned with CocoVid, videos, workshops, panels, Instagram hashtag, and Discord server, there's also going to be a badge collection game where when you watch videos, attend panels, and do other hashtag related challenges, you can win a uh, a virtual badge by either scanning a QR code or typing in a text code and being able to collect the badge for the video workshop panel or challenge that you have just participated in. There will be an Instagram hashtag that I will drop into the comments because I can't remember it. And you also will be able to get onto a room in the Discord server where you can show off all of the badges that you have collected. Okay, back to not editing, Courtney. I will be posting a video class on the Medieval Capsule Wardrobe on Friday, July 31st at 12 o'clock CST. It will be a premiere video here on my channel, which means that I will be available to respond to questions and comments during the initial viewing. I will also be participating in several of the Instagram hashtags and challenges. I do regret to inform you that the history of fashion video I mentioned earlier has been postponed to closer to Halloween, but I will be participating in a panel with Daisy Victoria and Ariana from Cosplay Sewing School on adapting historical clothing to fantasy interpretations, and that will be posted up over on Daisy's YouTube channel. For up-to-date information and to see all of the amazing videos and panels on offer, please follow the Costube Guide on Instagram or RSVP to the CocoVid brought to you by Costube Facebook event. On a tangentially related topic, you may or may not have noticed that I am coming up close on 400 subscribers. Considering that next weekend I will be taking part in the aforementioned costuming extravaganza, and considering how very quickly I managed to bridge the gap between 150 and 250 followers, and considering I said I would be hosting another giveaway when we hit the 500 subscriber mark, I wanted to make sure that I announced that yes, I still do plan to do said giveaway. It will just be structured a little bit differently this time, and will probably feature the need to leave a comment in order to be counted as an entry. That way nobody has to deal with public versus private profiles and people can opt into the giveaway instead of needing to opt out. The item that will be given away at the 500 mark will be one of the Elizabethan embroidered pockets that I made. Since making my video, I have sewn a few more of them to donate to my SEA Kingdom to give out as largesse, and again, I kept one back specifically to be used as my own largesse here on my channel. Don't worry, people of the more masculine persuasion, or those who portray masculine impressions, there will be something for you in the next giveaway I have planned at 750 subscribers. For now though, please don't hesitate to enter the upcoming giveaway, as I can tell you with absolute certainty that these pockets make for amazing holiday gift items for the more feminine reenactor in your life. And now that we have covered all of that, 
Let me grab my cuppa, in which is a lovely Twinings elderberry and blossom tea sent to me by one of my very favorite people in the whole world from England, Jen. Let me know in the comments or on social media what's in your cuppa, and let's get into it. I decided to draft my own knee-length half-circle skirt pattern since that would give me the A-line silhouette I wanted and maximum swishability at the hem. The pattern will consist of two quarter-circle panels, a waistband, and a 4-inch wide ruffle. Well, I just drafted that entire pattern wrong. Let's start again, and instead of using the waist circumference for a full circle skirt, let's use the proper measurements for a half circle skirt, and some bigger, sturdier paper. With the pattern cut and labeled, it's time to iron my linen, the leftovers from my Elizabethan kirtle project, which most recently became my Italian Renaissance dress, and lay it out for cutting. Since I have limited fabric, I'll have to lay out the two halves of the skirt carefully and then fit the ruffle and waistband into the space around it. Actually, despite my careful fabric management, I still ended up about three quarters of a yard short on the ruffle and had to use a little bit from another piece of linen in the same colorway but a different dye lot. It does look a bit different, but it's not too noticeable.
back to the ironing board. There's nothing quite like crisp, freshly ironed linen. Now we're at the pinning and sewing portion of this project. I recently snagged this magnetic sewing guide to help Tornado keep her seam allowances consistent, and I have to say that it's been super useful for me too. After I finish sewing the seams, I will finish them with a simple zigzag stitch. I have a serger, actually I have two, but they both need to be serviced and anyway, they're all the way over there. Once the skirt is assembled, I'll add the waistband. This will be folded over and secured with a whip stitch, but not until the very end. Next up, the ruffle. First, I will sew all the pieces into one long strip, finishing the ends with more zigzag stitches and pressing those seams flat off camera. It's time to switch out my regular presser foot for my handy dandy ruffler foot. It makes nice structured ruffles, actually more like tiny pleats really, which is exactly what I wanted, and also I'm incredibly lazy and didn't feel like gathering it all by hand. Once gathered, I'll pin the ruffle to the skirt body right sides together and stitch after switching the presser foot back to my normal one. Again, the edges are zigzagged since linen is one of the most frayingest fabrics known to costumer kind. And then we're off to the ironing board again for one last press. One day I will remember not to put the camera on the ironing board whilst ironing, but today, my friends, is not that day.
back over to the sewing machine to hem the skirt. I thought about hand hemming, but there was just too much ruffle for me to want to do that. Instead, I'll save the handwork for the waistband since I do want a nice, clean, invisible finish there. After folding the raw edge of the waistband under by half an inch and tucking a folded piece of ribbon into the back, I'll secure it with a whip stitch, leaving an inch or two open to feed the elastic through. When that's done and the elastic has been secured, I'll close that opening up as well. Since the main reason I wanted to make this skirt was its frilly versatility, I wanted to try styling it in three different ways to highlight that. First up, we have a Tim Burton inspired summer look, complete with black and white stripes and comfortable sandals. I'd be ready to hit the beach, if the beach wasn't closed for the pandemic. Our second look is very Victorian inspired. This style is particularly fantastic because it only requires a few accessories to take it in different directions. Feeling steampunk? Add a teacup holster and a smart waistcoat. Dark academia calling? Add an oversized blazer and switch out boots. Time for second breakfast? Put on a comfy jumper and hand it socks to tip it over into complete Rachel Maxi Hobbit core territory. Lastly, I went with a slightly dressier summer witch look, complete with handmade cauldron teacup and my new American Duchess boots that I possibly love more than life. This look can be made work and school safe by the addition of a tank top underneath the sheer beaded blouse. Ta-da! There you have it, friends. One reasonably simple skirt, three of near-infinite styling variations. Thank you for joining me on this, my first modern clothing sewing project for YouTube, but hopefully not the last. Please let me know in the comments below whether you enjoyed this more modern take on sewing or whether you would prefer that I stick to strictly historical projects in the future. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to like and subscribe, and if you're the kind of person who enjoys being told when new videos are uploaded, make sure to click the bell to turn the notifications on. You can follow me on Instagram and Facebook, and I'll put a link to those as well as my coffee page if you would like to make a donation to the Elms Purse and help keep Opus LNI in materials and brand in treats. As always, friends, be kind, do the work, continue supporting marginalized people, and keep creating. Huil. Talking to you is going to mess up my shot.